I've been in documentaries. Uh, there's a new one, Disease Reversal Hope, out now that, that also um, David is in. I just showed you. I've been on tons of TV shows. I've become kind of a regular on all the different news stations around here. If there's something going on for health, they have me on. Um, Plant-based news, I'm grateful to be on often talking about health and the immune system. Um, I've been on so many different news stations. Uh, I'm a professor for eCornell, so I know a lot of folks go to uh, T. Colin Campbell's courses to learn about the research and the science behind plant-based nutrition. And a couple of years ago, they asked me to come on to be their sole professor for autoimmune disease because my protocol has worked better than anything else for inflammation and autoimmune. So I've been very honored to be able to be the professor for their course. I'm also uh, the first plant-based doctor to be on the Forbes Health Advisory Board uh, because of the scientific validity of what I do and the results I've been able to have I've been able to be a mainstream person. And that's really what this means. This is why I'm showing you this is that my goal is to make what we do mainstream. So it's not just those of you who've kind of gotten down the rabbit hole to learn that there's a better way or who are first time listeners right now learning these new things, but that it will become normal and mainstream to know that there is a better way to treat autoimmune, to treat health, and that we do not have to walk around chronically ill. That chronic illness has been created by our lifestyles and we can change that fact. Um, there's a lot of new research now that are supporting that. Um, there was some research that was done uh, at Francis Crick Biomedical Research Institute in London because they're trying to find out why are autoimmune disease rising and spreading over the last 40 years? It's gone up anywhere from three to 9% per year over the last 40 years. And they thought maybe there was a change. Was the rise and spread of autoimmune diseases into areas that never had autoimmune disease before, like inflammatory bowel disease in Middle East and Asia. <clears throat> what they found is there's no genetic reason, but instead it exactly follows the spread of the Western diet. They've also found, there was a, a study done that showed right when the pandemic was starting, you guys, I'm sure all remember those days before we had treatments, somebody thought to actually look at what people were eating and how sick were they getting. So Dr. Seidelman of Columbia uh, actually studied frontline doctors and nurses who had high frequency contact and exposure to COVID-19 over two months in the summer of 2020 to see who got sick. And the results were striking. What they found was that um, people who said they were plant-based or vegan had 73% lower odds of getting moderate to severe COVID-19. 73% lower compared to people who did not follow a plant-based or vegan or vegetarian diet. Uh, people who were high protein eaters, so people who were paleo keto folks, they actually had a 48% higher rate of moderate to severe COVID. So if you think about that spread, 48% higher risk of moderate to severe COVID on a high protein diet, which really is a high animal product diet versus 73% lower risk. And I think the most important part of their study that they didn't really talk about much was the middle people. They found people who ate a pescatarian diet, which was mostly plants, but fish, right? People think fish is healthy, right? So a lot of folks will tell me, well, I want to be healthy. So I'm going to eat plant-based plus some fish. What they found the people who are pescatarian, so nothing processed, just plants and fish, had 59% lower odds of moderate to severe COVID, which is better than people who eat just high protein, right? but still 14% worse than people who ate no fish at all and just ate plants. So the conclusion of the, the study was that maybe people who eat plant-based are healthier because they get more nutrients, which I agree with. But what they didn't talk about was the deleterious or harmful effects of eating any kind of animal product that just adding fish lowered the protection from COVID by 14% compared to just plants alone. Very, very cool research. Now this really, um, mirrors what I've been seeing doing my work over the past 15 years now uh, is that when I'm reversing autoimmune diseases in people, that even people who add fish are not able to get those results that they can get from doing it purely plant-based. So there is a harmful effect to adding any animal products, even fish. And that's what they saw looking through COVID. Um, then John Hopkins did a study uh, looking at cruciferous vegetables in COVID, and they found uh, these are the same folks that found that cruciferous vegetables will kill cancer cells in vitro. Well, they also found cruciferous vegetables can block the replication of the COVID virus and the flu virus. They can cut it down in half. Can you imagine? Just cruciferous vegetables, which those of you who already know, 
that I recommend high dose of cruciferous vegetables, that makes sense, right? So it can kill viruses. It can uh, kill cancer cells in vitro and it can optimize your immune function. So the research that's been coming out, and I swear they, they did not even plan. They all wore green on the day they had me on. It's <laughs> so cool. But I'm bringing this to the public all the time. I'm actually leaving Wednesday morning next week just to fly to New York and back to talk about it on a morning show to just keep bringing this to the public. I want this mainstream so that everybody understands that this is something that everybody can do and you can do it with the supermarket. Um, I've also had people who have been sick with long COVID usually who get their sense of smell back and the brain fog lifts in a matter of weeks, especially in rapid recovery. So I want to get you super enthusiastic before I get to the nitty gritty, because I know if I just told people that um, what to eat and what to do, you could tune me out. But if I get you to get excited about it, you're going to hold it in. Now, um, I'm going to give you the outline of what to do. But if you want the details at the end, I'm going to show you how you can watch the long version of my classes for free. Okay. So don't get nervous or feel like you have to write everything down. I'm going to show you how to do this. So how do you get a healthy immune system? Well, let's start with what does a healthy immune system do? Healthy immune system can reverse a disease, right? If you get sick, you can get unsick again. You don't just stay sick forever, chronically ill. Two, it can fight diseases. If you get an infection, it can fight it off. And three, it can recover from diseases. You can come back to baseline, all right? If you can't do these things, you do not have a healthy immune system. How do you get one? Well, in my book, I, I talk about the six steps to healing with supermarket foods. And it's important at supermarket foods. You do not need supplements. You do not need some herb or grass that grows in a rainforest somewhere. You can go to supermarkets. People have done it who are on welfare and using WIC, okay? You can do this. First three steps, you're probably aware of. If you've been to this conference and you're listening to the speakers that I saw on this list, you already know that there's going to be some of this happening here. First, don't get sicker. Very, very important, right? If you want to get healthy, stop getting sicker. How do you do that? You eliminate the unhealthy stuff. Animal products, processed foods, oils. Now, most oils, okay? Processed oils. I'm going to tell you an exception a little bit. But this is pretty universal. I'm sure you've heard this a lot, how it impacts the heart how it can impact things like cancer. There's so many speakers you're hearing talking about that. I'm going to tell you how these things impact your immune system. So when I talk about avoiding my animal products, I'm talking about dairy, I'm talking about eggs, I'm talking about fish, I'm talking about all the different animals, right? Why does that have a negative impact on your immune system? All right. Well, all of these have something called arachidonic acid, okay? We're, and this is the omega-6 fatty acid pathway. You might have heard of that. Now, this is a pathway that I learned about in medical school, but what I never saw in medical school was this top part here. What I saw was just arachidonic acid, not where it came from. And if you look here, you'll see that these are the enzymes of this pathway, five locks, COX-1, COX-2, and these are the inflammatory immune cells, right? Leukotriene B4, thromboxane A2, prostaglandin E2. No reason to write these things down, just so you can understand the pathway. I like people to understand the science here. So... The way this works is the more arachidonic acid you have, the more enzyme activity you have, and the more of this product you have. There's no limit. There's nothing that slows this down. The more of this you have, the more of this. So you can see how if you have more inflammatory uh, omega-6, you're going to have more inflammatory mediators, right? Now, you do need some inflammatory immune cells. The problem is we've overdosed because, again, it's coming from all of these products. Right.